When winter comes around, most of us expect a familiar scene. Cold mornings, icy breath, and maybe a blanket of soft, powdery snow outside the window. But then, out of nowhere, something else arrives. The sky darkens, the wind tightens, and suddenly you hear them. Hailstones crashing down like a thousand tiny drummers. And even though both hail and snow fall from the sky, they couldn't be more different. Today, we're breaking down the key differences between hail versus snow. Why one is gentle and poetic, while the other can smash windshields and dent rooftops. That's what we're diving into, right here, on History of Simple Things. Snow is winter's soft-spoken artist. It forms delicate, tiny crystals that link together in endless, unique patterns. When it falls, it transforms entire neighborhoods into quiet, cinematic landscapes. Kids run outside with mittens, adults pretend to hate shoveling, and everything seems slightly magical until you slip on the driveway. Meanwhile, Hale is Winter's rowdy cousin, showing up uninvited and making sure people know it's there. Hailstorms can happen even on a hot summer afternoon, and instead of drifting peacefully, hailstones drop with a kind of surprise attack energy that catches everyone off guard. Understanding why each behaves the way it does means digging into the very heart of how weather works. Let's start with snow, the classic winter superstar. Snow begins high up in the atmosphere when water vapor freezes directly into ice without first becoming liquid. This process, called deposition, creates the iconic six-sided snowflake structure. The temperature, humidity, and movement of air around each forming crystal shape the patterns we see, from simple hexagons to complex feathery designs. Many people think snowflakes are identical, but in reality, the odds of two being perfectly the same are basically zero. Each one follows its own tiny chaotic journey as it falls through the clouds, freezing, melting, and refreezing in its own way. By the time it reaches your glove or eyelash, it has lived a miniature adventure. Hail, on the other hand, has nothing peaceful about it. It doesn't drift. It falls like nature decided to throw handfuls of ice marbles at the earth. Hailstones form inside tall, powerful thunderstorm clouds, especially those called cumulonimbus clouds, the big, towering ones you see before intense weather hits. Inside these storms are strong updrafts, winds so powerful they can lift raindrops upward faster than gravity pulls them down. When raindrops get swept to the top of the storm, they enter regions so cold that the drops freeze instantly. Once they freeze, the updraft may push them up and down repeatedly, which causes the hailstone to collect new layers of ice every time it cycles through freezing or supercooled water. It's like building an onion made of ice. Eventually, the hailstone becomes too heavy for the updraft to support and gravity takes over. That's when the hail falls, sometimes in harmless pea-sized pellets, other times as baseball-sized chunks capable of smashing windows or damaging crops. The size depends on how strong that updraft is. The stronger the internal winds, the longer the hailstone can grow before it finally drops. This is why hail is common in warm months. Thunderstorms thrive in warm weather, where hot rising air fuels powerful updrafts. One of the biggest misconceptions is that hail happens only when it's cold. In reality, severe hailstorms often occur in spring or summer, when storm systems are most energetic. You can walk outside in shorts and a t-shirt and still get pelted by ice. Snow, however, requires cold air from top to bottom. If the air even slightly warms during a snowstorm, flakes can melt into rain before they hit the ground. 
Another huge difference between hail and snow lies in their structure. A snowflake is intricate, lightweight, and airy. Look at one closely, and it resembles a tiny crystal sculpture. Hailstones, meanwhile, are solid layers of ice fused tightly together. If you were to cut open a hailstone, you'd often find rings, just like a tree trunk, showing the history of how many times it was lifted and frozen inside the storm. Each ring tells the story of a cycle through the cloud, which is why some hailstones become so surprisingly large. Snow also affects the world differently than hail. Snow insulates the ground, traps heat underneath, and provides moisture to soil as it melts slowly. Entire ecosystems depend on snowpack to release water gradually through spring and summer. Hail, however, arrives violently and can cause instant damage. Farmers dread hailstorms because a few minutes of pounding ice can ruin an entire season's worth of crops. Roofers also know the fear of golf ball hail denting shingles, gutters, and car hoods. While snow brings challenges to icy roads, heavy accumulations, and the occasional frozen mailbox, it usually gives people more time to react and prepare. Then there's the way we experience each one. Think about walking outside during a snow shower. The world falls quiet, sound becomes muffled, every footstep leaves a satisfying crunch. People come together to build snowmen or have snowball fights. There's a charm to it that makes winter bearable. Hailstorms do not offer charm. They offer urgency. The moment hail begins to fall, people run toward cars, shelters, houses, anything that protects them from injury or damage. Snow invites people outside. Hail drives them indoors. The next time frozen water falls from above, you'll know whether you're dealing with a gentle craft of snowflakes or the icy artillery of hailstones. And even though they seem related, they come from completely different worlds within the atmosphere. Snow is the poet. Hail is the percussion section. Both are fascinating. Both reveal something about weather. And both remind us that the sky is full of surprises. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.